All right, in this video, once again, we're going to be looking at the charts. So listen, if you're an options trader, you know it's super important to have some kind of catalyst for the options that you're trading on, whether you're trading call options, put options, spreads, whatever. The stock has to make the move that you're looking for. And how do you figure out when the stock's going to make that move? Well, for me, in the last 30 years, it's by looking at the charts. That's what we do. Technical analysis, chart reading is how we figure out when and where a stock might be moving to in the future. So if you want to get a leg up in your options trading, you really need to know how to read charts. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So that applies to you. Stick around. So let's go. All right, everyone, Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Once again, we're going to be looking at the charts. We'll look at the indexes, we'll look at individual stocks, and I will show you some specific stocks that I'm targeting as well. Because if you're an options trader and you should know this, the stock has to have some kind of catalyst, some kind of thing that's going to make it move in the future. That's the only reason why you should be taking an option trade. You know, stock traders have it a little bit easier. All you have to do is either buy or sell, depending on whether you're bullish or bearish. But option traders have to have an idea about strike price, expiration date, volatility levels, all these other things working against you. So it's really important that you figure out or have some kind of edge to your options trading. And to me, in the last 30 years that I've been in this business, it's all about looking at the charts and trying to figure out where the stock is going to or not going to go. All right. So let's just jump right in as we typically do. We look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. This is the most popular voluminous um, com uh, ETF out there. Everybody trades this thing. So we look at this first. And, and, and if you've been trading for a while, you know that the general market, meaning the S&P 500, pretty much drives individual stocks on a day-to-day -day basis because most of the time individual companies don't have some kind of news that's going to drive it so the overall market helps drive individual stocks so we look at the SPY first and we try to figure out you know what's going on and that could help drive the other individual stocks what you see on on the the chart in front of you is what I use that's it I keep it pretty simple I have a daily bar chart which shows the open high low and close each one of these vertical lines is one day's worth of trading from high to low. These three other lines that you see here are my simple moving averages, 20 day, 50 day, 200 day moving averages. And those help me gauge how a stock is trending. Down here is the 14 day RSI. And it's, a, it's an oscillator that oscillates between overbought and oversold areas. The default for the RSI is a 75 level and 25 level. You can see here, I've widened that out a little bit. For my purposes, I use the 80 level and the 20 level. And you can see not a lot of times that a stock or index will hit the 80 or 20 level. So when a stock or index does hit the 80 or 20 level, we really know that stock or index is getting into some overbought or oversold areas. And that a turn in that stock price should be happening somewhat soon not right then and there sometimes but in the near future so it just helps me gauge when the stock's getting a little overheated or uh, a little bit oversold okay and that's all i use so we have about a two-year time frame uh, on the on the window here that you see in front of you so let's talk about what the overall market is doing now as we know there's always going to be news out there that's that can affect the market here in the u.s we have this debt ceiling crisis that's coming up. The U.S. government needs to raise the debt ceiling or else there's a chance the U.S. can default on its obligations. We don't want that to happen. So that's <clears throat> the, 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 the theme out there, the, the headline news that's kind of keeping everybody on edge in the market right now. Of course, there's inflation and interest rates and all that, but those things will always be around. But right now we have this debt ceiling crisis. So the market really hasn't really gone anywhere. If you see this area where I'm circling over the last month or so, the S&P 500 or the SPY, the SPY, has been kind of trading in this narrow range. And But the good thing is that it's still sort of in an uptrend. Now we can go back a little bit. You always want to concentrate on the trends. Which way is 
the market or individual stock trending? Is it trending higher? Is it lower? Is it sideways? That way it can help you get an idea of where the stock might be going to next. Now, <clears throat> we know all of 2022 and drawing trend lines helps you see that. You connect some tops, you connect some bottoms, and you can see that the market was in this downtrending channel. I drew this last week. Now, since sometime last October, it's been in this little bit of an uptrend, which is nice for us, us bullish traders. We like to see an uptrend. And what we do here at the Smart Options Seller <clears throat> is we sell put options. That's our bread and butter. It's a directionally neutral to bullish type of strategy. So we really want to see the market go up. In 2022, as the market was going down and, and a lot of individual stocks were going down, we didn't have a lot of positions on in 2022 because the market was telling us to stay out. Market's bearish, not good for our types of trades. Now that the, the market is sort of sideways to upwards, it's working out a little bit better. We can kind of have some confidence that the market may continue to move in this trend. Once a trend gets going, it will stay in that trend until it, something pushes it in a different direction. Now, we can also draw, let's take these away here so we don't really jumble up our charts. <clears throat> take these away, a little manual labor involved here. Now you can also see, if you wanna dial down, we had this, what's called, and you know, you have the ascending price action with the flat top. I'm trying to get this thing flat right here. Let's try that. So you have that. <clears throat> this is typically a bullish, bullish type of chart pattern where you have the upwards movement and this flat top where it just can't seem to get through until it finally gets through it. All right. So we have a little bit more time here before the SP 500 can break through. It's the 420 level. Okay. I move over here a little bit. 420. We really want to see that, that resistance area get blasted through so the s p 500 can start to move back up to all-time highs near 480 dollars a share all right now if we look at the let's bring up the nasdaq composite which has been a little bit stronger than the s p 500 you can already see let's draw the same pattern you want to use patterns to help you gauge you know where a market might be headed and these patterns all these patterns typically repeat themselves over time that's because there's human beings involved in trading and they tend to make the same decisions over and over. So we have the flat top here. You can see, I'll, I'll blow this up a little bit. Right here, the last couple of days, the NASDAQ was getting through the resistance. Um, let's see if we can see it on the triple Qs, which is the exchange traded fund for the, for the NASDAQ. Now you can see the triple Qs here had this bottom around 260. We drew this line long ago, but you can see the nice uptrend and there's really no flat top here. It's really blasted right through it. So you can kind of see we have this other um, uptrend developing, which is good. So the NASDAQ's a little bit stronger than the S&P 500. We can go back to the SPY and take a look. So we really want to see this thing get through the 420 level. We really don't want to see this thing drop down through the bottom edge of the uptrending uh, bottom line here because if it does you know hopefully it'll catch a bid here this is the 50-day moving average the red line here so we want it if it does drop through we want it to catch here right around 4 be somewhere between 404 405 you can see the prices over here on the right hand side and then if it falls below that then we have the 200-day moving average down here which is currently you know 396 and a half roughly okay you can see the price here coincides with this moving average here so we really don't want to see it come down but the thing is we've got this debt ceiling looming june 1st is the date that's sort of been set in the u.s that we need to have an agreement on this debt ceiling crisis so everyone's sort of you know on pins and needles waiting around to see what will happen so we may continue to trade sideways uh, for a little bit longer until something gets resolved if it does get resolved i have a feeling we're going to blast through this 420 level all right, so let's take a look at some individual stocks. And doing all this, you know, will help you decide on your options trading strategy. I mean, 
there's a reason why we look at the charts because then we can figure out what option strategy we should we should use now if i feel like a stock's bottoming you know making that bottom and getting ready to go that's my cue when it's time to sell some put options so let's go through our list here we'll look at some stocks that we looked at last week now i want to show you this amd chart amd is a stock that i had talked about last week and at the end of this video i'll put that last week's video on the screen as well so you can click on that if you haven't watched it yet but we have this chart that uh this channel i should say that amd has been traveling in and it came back down so last week when i made the video it was amd was trading around here and i said this is probably if you want to get bullish on amd this is probably the good area or a good area where you, where you can take a stab because it's in this channel jumping up and down and it came all the way back to this lower leg here it's lower edge of the channel and it started to bounce that's that's the catalyst that you're looking for so we tried to sell some put options in amd which is a bullish trade we got a handful off not everybody got them because it just shot up like a rocket so if you're not quick sometimes you can miss it so amd had the nice move rallied about you know a good 10 to 15 dollars a share which is a nice move so you know draw these patterns check the channels check the trend wait for the bottoming action or if you want to be bearish wait until it comes up to the top and maybe sell some stuff up here okay so use those lines to your advantage what other stock the other one was um paypal okay i just want to show you paypal because we looked at that last week i said that paypal was in this channel this very very narrow channel for so long for a couple months and I said, and if you go back and watch the video, it, when, when a stock or index trades in a very narrow channel like that, eventually it's going to bust, bust out in one direction or another. So I think PayPal had their earnings come out um, just this past week. And look what happened. Down, down, down. Blasted through the bottom edge of the channel. And now it's heading lower towards $60 a share. All right. So PayPal has not been so kind let's go to the weekly chart here look at this so from made a double top right up here um, right down in early 2021 and it's been coming down since July 21 2021 look at this and it hasn't been at $60 a share since sometime in the summer of 2017 so PayPal you know could have some more downside action going here because once it busts through it a narrow channel like that it's got all that energy and it's and it's pushing it lower it probably has some more energy to push it even lower so you know if i'm a bull i'm staying away from paypal this is just how you can use charts like that uh netflix we talked about netflix same thing was in this kind of narrow channel here and it, now it's starting to move higher the other the other type of patterns you can draw are these um triangle congestion patterns okay so a stock and i'll show you one on costco in a second the stock you know starts to trade in this tighter and tighter range and then finally it gets to the apex or a little bit before the apex and it's going to blast out one direction or another i'm hoping that netflix um hits to the upside because we got a, a bullish position <clears throat> on netflix let's take a look at costco and now you can see the i'll move myself here if you if you ever want to know what the symbol is here it is up here in the top left corner now costco we drew this we drew this triangle last week look at this nice little big triangle heading back since uh last august or so <clears throat> it's getting real tight here something's gonna blast i don't know if costco has earnings coming up or if they had their earnings already but something's gonna give at some point now if you want to use an option trading strategy a lot of people if if you think that the stock's going to make a big move can you take advantage of the stock uh, a move in both directions can you buy a put and a call at the same time meaning you're taking a bullish and a bearish position at the same time you can certainly do that it's called a straddle or a strangle and you can buy that hoping that it, the move is going to be big enough once it blasts out to cover the cost of buying that straddle and i'll also put another uh, video on the screen at the end there about a video i made about straddles and strangles so learn to to seek out these patterns okay because these things happen all the time over and over again uh what other stocks can i show you that have some kind of pattern 
Um, we looked at Apple last week. Yeah, Apple I want to talk about. Okay, so Apple, we talked about the triple top here. Okay, the between 175 and 80, there's this big resistance line right here. Okay, if for Apple to make any move higher, it's got to get through this resistance line right here this long line at the same time we have this w pattern which is typically a bullish pattern once it once the the current trading gets above the middle area it should keep going but we also have this triple top so it's going to be a battle here between the triple top bearish people and the bullish w people and it's going to happen you, you know you're going to see apple probably trade up to this 176 177 area and it's going to figure out where it does it have enough gumption to get through and keep going or is it going to get rejected and and drop down again that that should play out i'd say within the next couple weeks if not sooner so that's what's happening with apple um amazon starting to get some mojo we looked at amazon last week it's in this little uptrending channel getting towards the top of the the channel okay so if it gets a little bit overbought there, it may may tend to come back a little bit. But as long as it keeps making this upwards movement, even though it, it pulls back, it's still within that uptrending new channel. So if if Amazon pulls back to either the moving average lines or even the bottom edge of the channel and starts to turn up again, that's your catalyst. That's your higher probability signal that you're looking for. You want to look for that higher probability signal. Okay, you don't really want to buy up here so much because it's getting a little exhausted and there won't be as many buyers up here as there will be buyers down down here. A lot of people look at the same chart patterns. So if everyone's looking for the same thing and everyone decides to get in, buy in down here, you know what the demand is going to push it higher. So the demand for buying is not so great up here as it would be down here. So use those to your advantage. Let's look at Pepsi because um, that's really getting into some highs here. We talked about this last week as well. So here's Pepsi getting overbought. I mean, look at the nice channel that Pepsi has been in. Down, up, down, up, down, up. This is a very reliable channel getting very overbought up here. I would not want to be a buyer for a short term trade because the chances are it's going to fall back down some degree. The RSI is in overbought territory. OK, so the higher probability trade here would be not to buy. Now, if you wanted to get bearish and short, maybe you'll have a couple days of opportunity while it pulls back. But then but Pepsi could once again keep going because it's in a nice, strong upwards movement. So if you want to get bearish and you get some profits, take those profits quickly because Pepsi could turn around again and continue on higher. Right now, I'm not a buyer yet because it's a little bit overbought for me. But if you're a buyer in the long run, and let's look at Pepsi on the long scale here. Let me move myself over. <clears throat> Scroll out to the, you know, a monthly chart and just look at the, look at this beautiful chart of Pepsi. Okay? Going back to the 1980s, just up 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 up. So if you're if you're buying Pepsi, for long term hold, I'm talking 5, 10, 15 years or longer. It really doesn't matter when you buy the thing because in 15 years, who's going to who's going to care that you bought it, you know, a dollar higher than where you could have bought it? Because in the long run, you're going to make all this money. But if you're a shorter term trader, you know, if you're trading on a couple days at a time or a couple weeks at a time swing trader, you do not want to buy up here because the the chances are there's a higher chance that it's going to pull back okay so use the channels use the overbought areas to to give you an idea don't don't chase don't chase up here don't be a bull chaser up there okay uh i'm trying to find you know some good stocks to show you that um could give you something here so this is berkshire hathaway class b shares these are this is warren buffett's class b fund the berkshire Hath hathaway fund doing pretty good um at the moment you know the last few weeks it's been going up overall uh let's let's go out we can go out to the weekly you know uh it's been going up august uh, 2015 here so it's been going up nicely we had this double bottom here for a while um you can see had had the support right here and rallied up so we all know warren buffett one of the richest men on the planet um, hundreds of billions of dollars his worth. 
I think it's, you know, somewhere between 150, 200 billion dollars, I guess, right now. I don't know the number offhand, but we know he's a great he's a great trader. He's not really a trader, but we know he's he's a great stock picker. Let's just put it that way. And, um, you know, I, I do have a report that I wrote. Oh, by the way. So let me just I'm bringing up my website here. Smartoptionseller.com. Our free put selling basics ebook. If you want to learn about put selling, what we do, why it's our favorite strategy, go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Click on the put selling basics link here. You can scroll down and put your name and email address in here. We'll send you an email with a link to the free ebook. Get it, learn about it. The other thing is if you go to our services tab and you click on shop, it'll bring up. The report, not free, uh, unfortunately, in this one, this report that I wrote about the secret to buying Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar. It's another options trading strategy that I wrote about in my book that if you want to piggyback Warren Buffett, you know, he's a great stock picker. It, this could be easy for you. Here's an option trading strategy that may be of interest to you. All right. So um, let's go back to the charts here. Here's Warren Buffett's looking pretty good right now. Has a nice up move. That's Berkshire Hathaway. What else do we have? Um, we always look at Tesla. We look at the more popular stocks. Here's Tesla. Tesla has been in this long downtrend for a long time. Um, and it's even in a little bit more localized downtrend here. Okay. So you can also see it's in another downtrend. The only thing I can say within this bigger downtrend, this could be a bull flag that's developing. We have what's called, you have the the flagpole here okay you have the up move then you have the pennant and typically this could be a bullish bullish opportunity where it blasts out to the upside but you have the downtrending moving averages here um, and you have the the upper edge of the channel here so that could contain any bullish action that arises from a little breakout here is going to be contained by this upper edge here so to me it's really hard to trade tesla because it's so volatile. Um, what else? We looked at PayPal. Any other stocks that could really show you anything good? We looked at Apple, AMD, uh, Spy. I'm um, just going through my charts here. Coca-Cola. It's sort of the same thing as Pepsi. You know, in the long, in the long haul. Let's let's pull out to the monthly. Coca-Cola, great dividend paying company. Doesn't really go very far as far as price appreciation. Uh, Pepsi's a little better in that regard. But Coca-Cola, long-term uptrending stock. You know, you really can't go wrong if you're going to hold that thing for decades. Uh, McDonald's doing well. Look at McDonald's also hitting all-time new highs again, just under $300 a share. Uh, McDonald's, look, look. So this is also had gotten into some overbought area. All right, you would think, hey, I'm going to short here. I'm going to get bearish here. And the RSI is turned down, but the stock's still kind of moving up a little. So it, it, it's, it, it doesn't always give you the turn right then and there. But, but this is also what's called a, a, a bearish divergence where the RSI is starting to come down, but the stock price is still going up. That means the stock price really could be getting exhausted up here. So keep an eye on this. McDonald's could sell off maybe down to the the 50 day moving average here. All right. So, uh, anything else of note, anything else? We looked at Costco. Um, right. Did we look at Costco? Uh, yes. We looked at Costco. That thing's getting ready to blow out. And, um, that's about it. Uh, Disney, we can talk about Disney. Yep. Let's talk about Disney real quick. Disney had earnings come out last week and got hit to the downside. Uh, you know, I'm a bull. I'm a, I'm a fan of Disney. I love the company. We know it's not going to stay down forever. Let's, let's take a look at the monthly chart of Disney. Um, you know, here's the COVID low $80 a share. So, you know, if you're a long-term buyer of Disney buy and hold, and you also have the 200, this is the 200 month moving average right here, right in the low eighties. So if you're looking to potentially get long on Disney, you may, you may be rooting for a little bit, like maybe another $10 move lower and then you buy. Okay. Or you, you start to nibble. And once Disney starts to turn higher, then, you know, you've probably bought the bottom. So I'm keeping an eye on Disney as well. Great company. You know, it's not going to stay down for long. All right. I think that's all 
for today. Um, once again, you, if you're an options trader, you want to use these chart patterns. You got to learn how to read the charts to give you an edge. You need an edge as an option trader. You need a catalyst for the stock to, to do something. Otherwise, you just sit out. Right now, you know, your free cash is earning 5% in certain banks. These online banks, CDs, T-bills are all paying over 5%. It's unbelievable that kind of return you can get, you know, guaranteed 5% on your cash right now. It's amazing. So if the, if the market's not showing you time to get in a trade, keep your cash in that 5% account. And then when it's ready to deploy, then you put it into the trade. All right. So that's all for me today. Uh, I'll put some videos on the screen here. Please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button. We want to make these videos go viral if, if we can. I'm trying to help as many people as possible. Um, and, and and that's about it. All right. So for for um, tomorrow, we all know it's Mother's Day. So don't forget your mom. And um, I'll see everyone next week. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.